Father, He is Jehovah Adonai El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Abiyad, the architect of our lives. He is our Father. Even when we are not faithful, He remains faithful forever. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you for today. We want to honor you for who you are in our lives. We want to thank you for the nations represented here tonight. We want to thank you for the peoples gathered in this great nation of Nigeria. We want to thank you for the season. Thank you for the shifting. Thank you for the migration of the mindsets of the people. Thank you, Jehovah God, for you are doing a new thing in our midst, and it shall be the testimony. We want to thank you. Give him some praise if you're a believer. As you sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for the grace he has provided for us to be here, but also for him calling and knowing that we are faithful and he called us into ministry. I want to thank the angel of the house Dr. Mosi Maduba and the first lady of this ministry that have labored for years and seasons to make sure the kingdom of God advances with power, with authority, but also with clarity. I want to bless God for every speaker, man and the women of God, the international peoples, the local speakers and every native of this great nation of Nigeria that have been able to receive us in this country to speak that thus says the Lord to a people whose mindsets are ready to shift to a new dimension and to a new level. Let us put our hands together as we bless all those categories of people that I have mentioned. I want to specifically thank the choir, the festival choir, that have been standing since morning through the night, even before we come there, in their positions, the choir, the workers, the greeters, people in hospitality, let us put our hands together as we appreciate them. I bring you love and greeting from my wife, Pastor Grace, that some of you were able to see last year when we came to speak for Mama Maduba in the MPN Apostolic Women and the Church of Jesus from Uganda. I happen to be one of the leaders of the Church of Jesus in Uganda. So I bring you love and greeting and blessing in Jesus' mighty name. My name is Charles Tumwine. The name Tumwine, if translated loosely, means we have God. I am a third generation of preachers in my family, in my lineage, being a grandson of an Anglican bishop that brought a revival in Uganda in the beginning of the 1800s and 1900s. My father is 94 years, but he's still preaching. A mighty man, he prophesies and moves and touches nations. The other day we put him on the plane so that he can get a feel of how it feels to fly. So I'm glad that I'm here to speak to you, not from what I just read in a book, but I'm going to tell my testimony. I came to address a man and a woman whose mind is made up 
whose thoughts and thinking pattern has been visited by God to move to a better place for where you are to a place where you have never been before. Praise be to God. I lead a ministry in the city of Kampala called Ebenezer World Outreach Ministries and New Life Harvest Churches. We are all over the nation and in some African countries by the grace of God. We advance the kingdom of God. We pursue the apostolic mandate, raising people, laying hands, and releasing graces in the earth, redeeming time. Now, I'm talking about a, sub a topic tonight, the evils of a fatherless generation. The evils of a fatherless generation. My second edition of the book, Where Are the Fathers?, was not uh, able to come off the press on time but when i return in july i should be able to carry some and also some of you are able to get my other book the prophetic dynamics which should also be available in july so that everybody can get to know and to read and to see what the lord is doing in our lives now being a third generation of preachers and being a man that was born in church, grown up in church, having served the Lord after this far for 33 years by the grace of God. I've been around enough to see and to understand what it means by a fatherless generation. I've been around enough to know, even in the natural, as a 50-year-old man, to understand the evils and the predicaments of a fatherless generation. Now, we need to understand that when we talk about fatherhood, we talk about the heart of the father. We cannot talk about a fatherless generation when we miss to talk about the heart of God, the heart of deity. So, I'll begin by making some fundamental statements as a way of introduction. I'll begin by submitting to you, ladies and gentlemen, and say, the kingdom of our God is a system. The kingdom of our God is a system. And what a system is, they are structures. Remember, I said, the kingdom to which we subscribe is a system. And where systems are, they are structures. Now, where there are structures, now, maybe um, you need to put it up. Uh, someone is saying system. Maybe um, sometimes I speak and some people say, what did you say, man of God? System. A system. <laughs> It is like when you guys come to East Africa and you begin to speak, we, we begin to need an interpreter to, to, to know what you said. So, likewise, I know someone did not hear that. Assist him. S-Y-S-T-E-M. The kingdom of our God is a system. How do you call it in Nigeria? System. Okay. Okay. But when you want to speak it, from the British kind of uh, accent, it is called a system, not a system. It's a system. Okay, that is for another day. All right. Because we cannot have time to teach English and to learn English now. So you call it a system, I call it a system. Okay, now the kingdom of our God is a system. And also, it is a system. You're quiet. Genesis chapter number 18. Genesis chapter number 18. I thought someone was having a problem to hear that. Thank God for technology. You are going to write a different thing. So now we have agreed the system is the system to the glory of our God. Because none of us is British, 
none of us is American, except the two or three or four of our friends. The rest of us, it is our second language. 19, 18, 19. Genesis chapter 18, verse number 19. 1, 9. Now, this is God giving a commendation about Abraham, about a man that he trusted and had such confidence and had such trust. So, in verse number 19, God is making a commendation. For I know him, Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. For I know about him I have such great confidence that Abraham shall bring forth children he shall instruct them he shall mentor them he shall show them a better way of following me so that i may be able to bring upon abraham that which i have purposed the evils of a fatherless generation god is agenda the intention of god for family the intention of god for perpetuality the intention of god for continuity is that children and spiritual or natural parents must work in harmony in consonancy and bring a synergy for the times ahead of them the purpose for which god initiated family is that both the parents natural parents spiritual and their offspring should work in synergy should work in harmony to bring forth a blessing and a continuity if you are believer say amen now i've been chanced to having traveled extensively on almost every continent by the grace of god i've been privileged to one time live in uh, the great nation of america for some time as a missionary in other places and i've come to a conclusion that whatever we do as a people whatever we shall ever become as a people is but governed by principles shall i say that again everything that we ever do everything that we shall ever become is ruled and governed by principles here i need to submit to someone and say god does not heal us god will not bless us out of sympathy because he is sympathetic god will not bless you because he is sympathetic but god will bless and honor the word concerning you by principle of his word am i communicating i think i am yeah because i can feel it i i feel it this is about system we, we we are we are doing well the system in which we are operating is a system ruled and governed by principles it is a divine principle that there is a progenitor that it should be someone to give a seed deposit a seed and this seed must grow somewhere and what comes out of the seed must be alive and it has to have life 
Number two. Genesis 49, verse 1. We shall not read the whole of it, but just write Genesis 49, verse 1. Quickly, quickly. Genesis 41, 49. 49. And verse 1. Now, having seen God's agenda, now look at this. Before we explore, before we try to look at the evils of a fatherless generation and what has led to this generation being fatherless. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Now, here, even without going in the depths of the text, we find a very crucial component called inheritance. Jacob is coming to a close of his life. Jacob, the eyes are waxing, they're dimming. Jacob is concluding his journey. And he said to his offspring, gather ye together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Now, an uncle, a cousin, a niece, a colleague, a friend, a brother, or anybody else can love you, can laugh with you, they can bless you, but they cannot transfer inheritance until when you have a father. A colleague, a prophet, an apostle, anybody else can try to speak well about you. But it is only a father that can transfer into your hands an inheritance. We are having a fatherless generation. And therefore... We are having a cutting short of the blessing of the inheritance. We are having a fatherless generation. And therefore we are having a generation that has no perpetuity. They are not continuing. I am the last born out of five children. And all of us, we are called in ministry. We are serving the Lord by the grace of God. From the firstborn to the lastborn, we are three men and two girls, two sisters, serving the Lord. But I have discovered that even as a family that has been called by God for the work of the ministry, it is crucial how we follow our natural biological father, but also each one of us has got a spiritual father to whom we look and subscribe. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Shela tala kambrona saitila hala hatan. Holele buyana sa tem break it. Hear the words that Jacob speak to Reuben. He said, Reuben, my firstborn. And he comes and say, Present sir. He begins to speak. Oh my goodness. This is what he said. Thou art my firstborn. My might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then you defiled your father's bed. The evils of a fatherless generation. All of you understand that Jacob married Leah, Jacob married Rachel, Jacob married Bila, and other girls that were helping these two official wives, Rachel and Leah. Because one of the concubines of Jacob was in the age bracket like Reuben. One time, when it was time for the harvest, Reuben went and slept with one of those girls who was a concubine of the father, Jacob. And as a result, a curse was instituted. 
a curse was instituted. You see, fathers may not tell you how angry they are until such a time when it is time to pass on the inheritance. That is when they begin to tell you how they have been feeling all along. Have mercy, Holy Ghost. Reuben, the son of the usefulness of Jacob, he felt, now daddy is going to speak well. Daddy is going to pass on the reins of power because I am the firstborn. And according to our culture, the firstborn must take the authority and the charge. He said, Reuben, you shall be unstable. That was the last time we hear about Reuben. That was the last time we hear his strength. He began to be unstable like a reed on water. Oh, may God have mercy tonight. May God have mercy tonight. That it should be no man or woman in this great global prayer quake that will remain like a Reuben. That will remain unstable in your workings, unstable in your testimony, unstable in your character, unstable in your communication to your father. I loved it. Everybody that stood here, they began to speak well about Dr. Maduba. I began to see even men kneeling to Papa Maduba in my heart I'm like saying God I pray that is genuine it is my prayer that that thing should be for real it should be genuine from the bottom of the hearts of the people because if that is genuine then Nigeria is going to be taken for the Lord if that is for real then there is going to be such an amazing power now we are talking about the evils of a fatherless generation but we began by seeing what god says about abraham and the family and what he thinks about family continuity it is you know, reproduction it is about the fear of the lord it is about commanding instructing showing the people the children the way of the lord because of the expanse of this topic i'm using natural and i'm using spiritual it is not by mistake i'm a theologian but for this assembly i'm mixing natural and spiritual because we need to relate the two all right now i'm reading the scripture for our text and then after which i'll show you the evils and i'll make a prophetic declaration for the last 30 years by the grace of god in every nation in every place in every country every country in the way i've gone the Lord has used me prophetically to activate the gifts of people. And even tonight, I trust the Holy Ghost to do the same. If you're a believer, say, I believe it. First Samuel. Chapter number three. First Samuel. I can hear some voices. How do you call that in Nigeria? Say it again. Okay, first Samuel. We have agreed tonight, which uh, we shall go with first Samuel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, first Samuel, chapter three. Samuel, the Lord. We we still have we still have a lot to do. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was precious in those days there was no open vision and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see and ere the lamp of god went out in the temple of the lord where the ark of god was and samuel was laid down to sleep that the lord called samuel and he answered here am i and he ran unto eli and said here am i for thou callest me and he said i could not lie down again and he went and laid down and the Lord called yet again 
Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son, lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called a child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, now you need to understand at the beginning I said, The kingdom of our God is a system, is a system. If it is a system, whatever we do is governed by principles. Let me submit to you. We don't honor fathers because they are righteous. We honor fathers because it is a principle of God. We don't honor fathers because they are too holy. Actually, some fathers, if you look at them with the natural eye, they don't deserve to be called fathers. But because it is a principle, then we have no option but to call them thus and to submit and to obey and to serve them. If you are a believer, say amen. All right. Now, it is in this time that the little Samuel doesn't know the voice of God. He doesn't know how God speak. He doesn't know how to respond the evils of a fatherless generation. The Bible scholars that are here, you understand, you'll agree with me, that during this time, Eli's home is a mess. Eli's children are nasty. They are doing stuff you cannot imagine. By this time, Eli's family is falling apart. You remember that book, Things Fall Apart? By Shinua Shebe? By this time, the family of Eli is falling apart. But still, he has the capacity to hear God and to give a direction. That is the better thing with fathers. Even when they seem like they are messed. Even when they seem like they are struggling. Even when they seem like they don't make a lot of sense. But still, they hold the key to the next generation. They hold the key to the next dimension of the power of God. My spiritual father, Apostle John Eckhart, a man that the Lord is using so much into the prophetic and apostolic and deliverance, you know, coming out of Crusaders Church in Chicago. You know, he always tells us when we have those literates for sons and daughters, he usually tells us, he said, it is not what people think about you. It is about what God think about you. Does that make sense? It is not about what people think about you, but rather what God think about you. Eli has the capacity in the midst of the troubles in his family. And he says, Samuel, when you hear that voice again, that is the voice of the Lord. Don't rush to me. I'm natural. When you hear that voice again, say, here I am, Lord, speak. Now, because we need to redeem time, I'll show you uh, the characteristics of this generation and what we need to do and I'll wrap it up. When you look at First Samuel chapter 10 verse 12 the Bible talks about Saul, it talks about Samuel, it talks about a company of prophets, it talks about the incident that happened when Saul was looking for the donkeys of his father, you all remember? And then when he's looking for the donkeys, he cannot find them. And then a lot of things happen. 
But one key thing that amazes me is when Saul finally receives an impartation, when he receives and is associated with the prophetic people on the mountain of the Lord, and he begins to go like La Melabushalat. And the people are not impressed. The people are not mesmerized. The people turn and say, Is Saul also among the prophets? By the way, who is his father? time has come when the world will no longer be impressed by the miraculous when the world will not be shaken by the supernatural when the world will not be taken at old by the people that fall down but when the world will begin to demand and say who is your father this question was not out of curiosity this question is not because they didn't know mr kish but they want to know the identity. They want to know the spiritual DNA soul who fathered you. How can we trust you? Are you reliable? When we look at you, who do we see? Who is their father? I met Pastor Uche in the city of Nairobi, Kenya, when he was on his honeymoon. With his wife two weeks into marriage one week into marriage and then i was preaching for archbishop arthur kitonga so i do not know how Wuche and his wife stumbled into the meeting and then prophetically the holy ghost began to pick him up and there was such a strong ministry upon them and actually they brought me to nigeria for my very first time and Wuche, pastor Wuche from port harcourt he brought me to gilgal way way back even before i could stand into this podium into this platform but when we met he said my father is dr mossy madoba in my heart i'm like saying i want to meet dr mossy madoba did i speak it well yeah i want to put in some attitude dr mossy madoba Because if I pronounce it the Ugandan way, it will sound Maduba. But here, Maduba. <laughs> so, I began to say, Lord, let me meet your servant, Dr. Maduba. So once upon a time, in the nation of Chad, in the city of Njimena, I met Dr. Maduba. We are preaching together. We are in the same hotel. He said, I'm Dr. Maduba. But his simplicity, you could not tell who he is. He said, I'm from Nigeria. And then I said, oh my God, this is the Dr. Maduba that they told me about in Nairobi. Someone spoke highly of a father. The people are demanding, Saul, who is your father? They want to know his authenticity. Actually, here, let me submit. Let me submit. Prophet Judy and Prophet uh, Sabina and everybody. Listen, let me submit. Everybody is equal to who fathered you. Everybody here, you are a reflection of who fathered you. Does that make sense? Each person you are equal to who fathered you that means the people here were demanding to understand they wanted to know that is why in western countries today you hear words you hear words like founding fathers father of the nation father of the house father figures because the generation needs to be restored back to the principle of God's word. They said to Saul, who is their father? He could not answer. Now, as a result, yes, everybody is equal to who fathered them. 
to who fathered them to who fathered them when i begin to move into the prophetic and deliverance you literally see my spiritual father you literally see my biological father they cast devils they hate the devil they speak with authority they take territories everybody you cannot look like your sister you look like who fathered you all right now as a result number one the evils as a result the structures of leadership have been both compromised and manipulated have mass holy ghost have mercy holy god the evils of a fatherless generation the structures of leadership have been both tampered with compromised and manipulated when you look at galatians chapter 4 verse 1 up to verse 4 you know the story surely i tell you as long as a son a hair is young he remains but under the tutors instructors and mentors until the appointed time until the due season that is the bible which our father apportioned that is that is it now because of a fatherless generation which has been brought about by gross gross rebellion we have structures of leadership manipulated compromised in second kings chapter 24 verse 13 to 14 second kings chapter 24 verse 13 to 14 the bible says now it talks about uh, the carrying away of the treasures the nobles the peoples the pieces the everything into babylon this is the time when king nebuchadnezzar carried out captive all the peoples and everything that was consecrated to god and that actually it is during this time that even daniel shadrach meshach and abednego were also taken into captivity in babylon now it happened during the setting of that scripture that the only peoples that remained were the vain people people that had no value people that had almost nothing and actually that is where we get the scripture which paul used and say even if you have ten thousand instructors yet never have many fathers for in the gospel i have begotten thee now the word instructor in the greek when you look up into the greek it is the same word which says boy leaders b-o-i boy leaders today we are having boy leaders instead of fathers leading the work of God. May God have mercy. May God have mercy. Number two, the moral absolutes have been removed. The moral absolutes have been removed. Today, actually, you don't bother yourself about is it okay? Is this wrong does it make sense today we say how many people are doing what i am doing the moral absolutes have been removed from society from the church from communities it is no longer about this is not proper but you rather just fight and say in any case i'm not alone and even that pastor does it even that man does it and even that choir does it the moral absolutes have been removed number three the order of god has been tampered with the order of god has been tampered with as seen in judges chapter 17 and verse number six the order the divine order of god has been tampered with in judges chapter 17 and verse six the bible talks about micah i think you call him mika is mika uh-huh okay micah on this we are together in this chapter the bible talks about micah and the young levite who was sojourning and moving and then micah say come please come where i am become a father to me i'll pay you here i need to submit we have 
hired people doing what is supposed to be God's work. May God have mercy. We have hired people. I travel nations. I travel cities. The problem is the same. If it is in Asia, if it is in Europe, if it is in America, if it is in Africa, the problem is we have hired people. Not people that are doing service to the Lord because of passion and calling, but they are hired. Micah said to the Levi, come, I'll give you a tithe. I'll give you the clothes. I'll give you the pay. Be a father to me. That is manipulating the divine order. The order of God has been manipulated. People, Levites, are not paid to do their Levitical role. No! The Levites are not paid by anybody except God to execute their roles. But Micah is saying to the Levite, come, I'll pay you, I'll hire you. Which means I'll fire you whenever I desire. Number four. God have mercy. Number four. Accountability is totally missed in whatever we are doing. No accountability. I went to Zambia. I found two young men. They were from Uganda. One was calling himself a doctor. The other one was calling himself a prophet. But none of them was any of what they said they were. So, I'm running meetings at the University of Zambia. I hear the Ugandans in town. I go to check them out. I sit. When they saw me, one of them walked to me and said, Apostle, just mind your business. Don't say nothing about mind your business. For you, the Lord has blessed you, but we, we are just uh, working out life. Mind your business. The prophet, in quotes, would come and say, You woman, there is a tumor in your abdomen. And the doctor, in quotes, would confirm and say, Yes, there is a tumor in your abdomen. You need 10,000 kwacha, the Zambian money. You need 100 kwacha, so that the man of God, the prophet, can pray for you. That is witchcraft. That is manipulation. I had to rebuke them. I had to speak to them sternly. Their meeting ended prematurely. We have hired people. We have people that are not accountable to anybody. The evils of a fatherless generation. They come to Nigeria. They go to Kisumu. They go to Kampala. They go to Rwanda. They can sleep with anybody. They can speak anything. They can extract money from anybody. They can use the name of Jehovah for their intentions because they are not fathered. Therefore, they have no one to get accountability to. May God have mercy. Number five. The harvest has been slowed because there is no genuine release and sending the harvest we are talking about speed up the harvest one of the things that has delayed the harvest is the absence of genuine fathers and authentic sons in the kingdom of god no release no sending i have a sending church in the city of kampala which here whenever i'm in any country they know where i am my wife must know my family must know the people back at home must know that's the same church. I give accountability. I give report. I maintain the integrity because I know there is a church that sent me. But now, the harvest has been slowed. First Thessalonians 3 and verse 2. First Thessalonians 3 and verse 2. First Thessalonians 3 and verse 2. The Bible talks about uh, the sending, the reminding. Paul is writing to the Thessalonians right Thessalonians I thought so how do you call them ah uh, oh God that is too hard for me Thessalonians all right okay now that one <laughs> and Saint Timothy our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ 
to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. This is Paul. He said, we sent Timothy. We released him. Does that make sense? The harvest can only continue when we have genuine sons in the house. Here I need to submit. When we say sons, there is no gender. It's not about female or male. When we say sons, we mean children of God. When we say fatherhood, it is both man and a woman. A woman can be a father and a man can be a father. So get that right from this point. All right. Number six. No longevity and perpetuality. No longevity and perpetuality. No long life. One time, we were in a meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, hosted by Crawford Dollar. And then he began to invite, in that meeting, he invited his spiritual father, you know, Kenneth Copeland. And then when I looked, I sat in the section of the you know, international visitors. I looked, these are highly anointed servants of God. Each one of them is celebrated. But still, Kofo Dollar can relate, can proudly say, this is my father, without hesitation. At this point, I need to make this submission, which my friend, who went to be with the Lord, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, spoke to us in Uganda several years ago. I'll quote, after the meeting, successful as it was, we sat in a hotel at the organizers and he said, men and the women of God, this you must understand as a principle of life. A lizard in Africa can never become a crocodile in America. When you are a lizard in Uganda, when you are a lizard in Kenya, a lizard in Nigeria, and they put you in the water, take you to Japan, all America, you can never turn into a crocodile. You remain a lizard. What does that mean? I say, Archbishop, what do you mean, sir? He say, because you need first prove yourself where you are before you think of territories and nations and regions. I was delivered. I was delivered. A lizard in Port Harcourt, a lizard in Abia State, a lizard in, a, in a other places in Kaduna will remain a lizard. It cannot turn into a crocodile wherever you take it. That is phenomenon. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, as I bring this to a close, I said no longevity and perpetuality. The ministries in Africa don't live on the ministries in Africa don't live on 10 years. The ministry is good. 10 years down the road is completely gone. You travel to Europe. I was chanced to go to the Institute of D.L. Moody in Chicago, in Illinois. And then I looked at the structures. I looked at the establishment. I looked at the continuity. I repented. What is wrong with Africa? What is the problem with the continent? Where are the fathers in Africa? Men and the women that have the passion for the church and not themselves. I loved it when the man of God said here, my church, my choir, my equipment, my people, my everything, my land, my tent. That is not a mentality of people that advance the kingdom of God. We must have the passion. We must have the cry to make sure everything we do, we do it even unto the glory of God. And this is the last one, rebellion. People are so liberious. There is such gross, intense rebellion amongst people because of a fatherless generation. A generation that moves almost without direction 
the church becomes like an amorphous kind of thing not description you find a young man there i'm an apostle you find a young girl there i'm a prophet who ordained you it doesn't matter the holy spirit ordained me it is not about any man you find someone i'm a man of god who is your father my father is in heaven you find and then he said but now to whom are you accountable he said ah, i give my accountability to the holy spirit that is wrong doctrine we give accountability first to men before giving it to god you must have an accountability partner someone that you give accountability to one of the things i've learned over time is preachers and pastors and apostles and prophets they love to talk about money but themselves they don't give they love to talk about the tithe but themselves they don't have nobody they tithe too they love to read scriptures and take the offering but when you ask them where do you tithe they say ah man of god you see my father that is wrong everything that we do is by principle when people tithe into your life you must be tithing somewhere it is continuous the greater blesses the lesser it continues it does not stop at you you are not alpha and the omega when we bring tithes and offerings in your life where do you tithe yourself because i don't want to invoke a curse upon my life by tithing into your life and it ends with you and your wife where do you tithe time is coming when people are going to put us to task as the leaders about some stuff time is coming when people are going to riot holy riot demanding to know some stuff time is coming when people are going to put us to such a great task so in your free time you should, uh, Luke 1 and 17 Luke 1 and 17 Luke 1 and 17 choir please come Luke 1 and 17 and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and a disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord a fatherless generation is coming to an end a fatherless generation is coming to an end what is his name tell me your name sir sorry sonny i hear even the word of the lord is saying the research a shifting of favor and the research an increase of the intensity of the anointing upon your life some people will mistake you for cock franklin and then you shall tell them no i'm not cock franklin i'm me for god has made me as me i see you in the days to come causing a revival in the ministry of worship i see you in the days to come writing songs which shall be sung across the continent and even beyond i see you putting down songs and your songs shall be in such demand because you have cultivated your spirit because you have yielded unto the holy ghost i see that even in the days to come people wait for you not as a curtain raiser but as a man to stir the hearts of others you are an apostolic worshiper and i see in the days to come you shall traverse the lands and the bridges of the land for the cause of the cross get ready says the spirit of god for it is in this season that a new power a new zeal a new momentum shall be picked by you and the people that knew you before they shall look at you and say truly this is but the working of the holy ghost in the middle of the night songs will begin to flow in your spirit you shall wake up in the middle of the night to begin to write and scribble the relics and the music that will be running in your life Mama, what is your name? Come.
What's your name, ma'am? Margaret. Yes, Margaret. The Spirit of Christ will say to you, this is the moment you've been waiting for. You have opened your spirit and you've been in a time of readiness and you've been in a time of prayer and fasting and waiting upon the Lord since the close of 2016 up until now. When you began to fast, you said, Lord, I don't need uh, nothing. I'm not praying about health. I'm not praying about money. I'm praying I want to know more of you. I want to know you more than anything else. And then on the 15th day of your fasting, an answer came and an answer was given. But you've been waiting for such a moment to have an encounter with the genuine prophetic anointing to start and pop you up. It is this time that God even is giving you nations. I see your feet are being anointed even right now to dispatch you in two regions and in two places. You said when you accepted the Lord, you said, Lord, wherever you send me there, I will go. It is in this season that the Lord is commissioning and is sending you apart for the work of the ministry to send you. And your word shall be about prayer, holiness, and righteousness. And even as you go, the miraculous, the supernatural will be happening like never before. For your hands have been anointed for healing, the healing of them. Oh my God. Oh my God. For the healing of the many. She shall actually have seen even lepers. She lays hands on the leper and immediately their skins become as white as snow. I decree it upon your life. I speak speed. I speak activation. Kela. Bella. Smale. Kela. Beshite. Balake. Tesi. Ola Keta. All over the house, the spirit of the father is touching, is mending, is healing those deep hearts. Some of you were molested by your spiritual father, some of you were wounded by your natural biological father some of you were abused by your mentor when you were growing up in ministry some of you words were spoken about your life about what you will never become some of you you are here because someone said you never mount up to anything some of you you are struggling because someone said you shall move like the sun you never stabilize you move until when you die under the action of the office in which I operate by the virtue of the power and authority of my calling I reverse every word I cut short every word I break every power I nullify every saying Ma 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 Telak Let the healing come let the healing come. Let the healing come. Rebuke every absolomic spirit. I rebuke every spirit of Absalom, every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of intrigue, manipulation, intimidation, and control. Let the healing begin. Oh, man, listen. Now, Sheta, Allah, la baka. Let the healing come, man. She, Allah, let the healing come. She, more we say. Oh, come, oh, more tell them, okay. Mela, tell them, kill them. I cause a release, man. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. Malek. Let there be a release. I cause activation of the fivefold to be manifested. Kel. Shell. Kela. Kel. 
Oh, let, let a prophetic voice be heard in Nigeria. Let a prophetic voice be heard in Nigeria. Let a prophetic voice be heard in Africa. Let there be a new breed of people. Let there be a new breed of people. Here in your presence, let it rain.